and we are live on Facebook. Derek Evans here, Jay Lee in the house. What? what? So, <laughs> so we, we looked at these stats last time and a lot of people, particularly on YouTube. So if you're YouTubing right now, you know who you are. Um, particularly people were saying, well, hey, these stats, this is great, but this doesn't really show the impact yet because, you know, the lockdown just started. It was, you know, mid-month transition. Escrows take a month to close. So we're really going to need to see the April stats, Jay. Not until we get those are we going to really know what's going on. This is what we were told. So today, we're going to dive into them stats. Boom, shaka laka, let's get it. Okay. Um, this is gonna, this, I think this is going to change a lot of people's perspectives um, when we go over this. Well, I think yeah. what it does is just sheds light on kind of like what we see and experience and know just by being active in the marketplace. Yep. It helps put it down in, in black and white, you know, for people who aren't active in the marketplace. So, yeah, man. All right. So let's get to it. So we're going to be going over 2018, 19 and 20 for the month of May, uh, April. Right. So I do these, uh, I get these from my market center. Um, our, 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 our OP, you know, helps us put all these together to be set out to us. So, um, I know a lot of people aren't sharing this information, um, but I like to be super transparent with everybody. So check this out. Um, 2020 total sold out of the listings was 64.55%, right? Okay. Total listed is 12,000. So what that's telling you is compared to last year, we had 16,432 listings. This year we have 12,939. So we're about a 3,500, you know, ish drop in listings for the month um that is a lot of homes missing from the market now if you look at 2018 we had 15,700 so last year went up now it's way down the reason it's way down is because a lot of people don't want people in their homes and so um you know as we started getting a handle on the coronavirus and things are starting to open up like restaurants opened up what yesterday i think it was yeah um a lot of postings yep you know so right now People are still kind of in that fear mindset and we've kind of realized that, Hey, this is the way we're going to navigate COVID-19. Um, but you know, sellers are still very skeptical. Um, so I'm glad people are starting to go back to work to, to get this going. But so let's look at the, the hot spots for, you know, our VA buyers, right? That's usually between 500 and $700,000. If, so if you look at red is 2020, yellow is uh, 19 and blue is 18. You see how many less listings we have in those two groups? That is huge. All right. So if we're looking at uh, 2020, between 500 and six, uh, 600,000, we are short over 600 listings just in that price price bracket. Now, 600 to 700, we're short 1,875. Now, if we drop down to 400 to 500, we're short, you know, it was 2,650. Now we're at 1,780. So that's 900. Um, Right in there, we're a couple, you know, uh, you know, about 2,000 listings short just in that price bracket. And that's a lot considering that, you know, the total listings is 12,900, right? And so just to clarify, Jay, this is, we're looking at, you know, the total listed here that gives you these numbers here and then total sold um, right here. This is uh, April, April of each of these years, right? So right. we're comparing... April of 2020 with mm -hmm. April of 2019, April of 2018. So it's a right. fair comparison of where this exact same time of the year, cyclically, exact same time, year after year. And the way that these are set up on these graphs, just, you know, so that's 18, 19, and then 20. So it's just going top to bottom. So yep. when you look at the colors, if, you, if you're colorblind or something like that, you can't see colors. It's just the top one is 2018, then 2019, and then 2020 in each one of these price brackets. So it's breaking right. it down by price bracket for you. So you can look at like, hey, what about my range? What are we looking in? We're looking right. in this range. Okay, well, what's going on with the market in my range? And this report gives you all that information. Right. And so, you know, another one that we find, especially like, you know, single folks or, you know, first time home buyers is the four to $500,000 range. Um, and, you know, again, this year we're at 1780, last year, 2650. So, you know, 900 homes. Crazy. Support, right for the month. That's just this month. I mean, last year, we last month we were short as well. So if you can add on to those and we're selling 64.55% of those homes within that month. 
So that means there's only, there is only 36% that roll over. Now, some of those listings may have been at the end of the month. So if it listed April 29th, April 30th, that counts as an April listing, even though it was only on the market one or two days. So just, you know, keep that in mind as you're looking at this, because homes are getting listed every day. Um, we are extremely short on inventory. Uh, so we are in a very, very hardcore seller's market right now. Um, like I just put a listing on the market day before yesterday and I have 40 showing requests and already people shoot me offers above list price. So unless without seeing it, uh, they saw it, they saw okay. it. So they didn't um, see it. One lady didn't see it and she, she's trying to write me a cash offer, but she's trying to come in at list price. And I'm like, I'm not going to take a cash offer at list when I can take a VA at more than list, you know? Um, so let's go on to the next slide. Check this okay. out. Cool. And I'm, uh, I'm working my first, my first this is my first rodeo on the, <laughs> as the uh, producer here. This Actually, this is just going to roll down. There we go. Yeah. yeah. All right. So this is another way to look at it. So it's vertical. You know, some people work horizontal better and this is, so this is down by the numbers. So as you're seeing, um, the price points at the bottom, again, the one to the left is 18, middle 19, right is 20. Across the board, except for under 200,000, um, we're, you know, and 1.5 uh, million, you know, up there in that range, we're, we're at, uh, uh, actually, no, all the way across. Yeah, except for, yeah, except for under 200,000. Across yep. the board, we have less listings um, than we did last year. So just goes to show you where the market, um, less inventory. And you can kind of see that trend with yeah. every single, you know, pretty much every single one of these, the difference between 18 and 19 may have been different, but the overall trend, you know, has been just lower, lower inventory. And this of course leads to higher prices. Yep. And that's, and that's the thing that so many people are unaware of. Like I hear so many times that, oh, I'd never buy in California. I don't ever want to, you know, I don't want to live there long enough to, to enjoy the home. Dude, it's not about enjoying it. Do you buy stocks? <laughs> it's the same thing. You know, you're going to buy now. And as the supply decreases, the price increases. You're going to make some money. So um, that's yeah. a sure bet. You know, a lot of people who bought in this range a few years ago are selling in this range or this range. <laughs> I mean, that's what is, is, is great about, you know, having real estate long term. I haven't even had to be very patient lately. It's the last 10 years. The market has been just up, 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 up. And yep. what I'm seeing here is basically all the, the recipe for that to continue. Yeah. It's, it's just going to keep going. And, you know, I, I hear not so savvy investors saying, oh, the market's going to crash, market's going to crash. Um, the data points to exactly the opposite. So I'm sorry, it's not going to happen. Um, let's go to the next one. Okay. All right. Three year sold trends by price. All right. So this is again a three year uh, trend of property. Um, again, we're at a 64.55%. Um, wait, is this the same one? Okay. Um, this is just sold. So how many homes sold in the price point? So look at 500 to 600,000 right there. In April of this year, we sold more homes with less listings. Wow. Right? Wow. And again, last year, uh, if you go up to the one above that, 600 to 700, we were one house off with 4,000 less listings. Right? So what does that tell you? That tells you that we're selling homes faster than we did last year at a higher price due to the fact that there's no supply. People are sacrificing their wants and needs just to become homeowners. Um, and I can understand that because why throw your money away in rent when you can build equity in a property? Um, and if you're, if you're looking at this as a buyer, it helps you understand that you got to come in strong. You cannot come in and expect closing costs and concessions and a discount or something. You got to come in strong to win that home. Because if you don't, someone who was looking at the home down the street that didn't get it is just going to be like, screw it. I'm throwing my full budget on this one just to get it. Yeah. And I think that shows you just the level of demand. So we, like we measure demand, we look at, you know, okay, well, how many people are out at open houses? Okay, that's all great. But what we really 
what really shows you where demand is at is these numbers right here. If you have less total homes for sale, but more transactions taking place, that shows you that there's a, a serious convergence of demand. And, exactly. Uh, that's that's what you have right here. So a very high demand and a limited supply mm -hmm. tells the tale. Exactly. Exactly. You know, supply and demand. It's that's the key to anything that's being sold. Um, all right, let's roll over to the next one. All right, listed compared to sold per month. All right, so uh, sold is in yellow and listed is in blue. And th on the left side, that's 19. On the right side, it's 2020. So uh, April, uh, we are down um, 847 units sold compared to last year. Um, so that's 29.6%. Um, for March, we were up 27 units, 1%. That means we sold more homes in March. Um, and if you look at February, we were up 178 units, 9.4%. Then again, down um, compared to you know uh, our our list our listings were down 718. So look at the the number of listeds versus solds, right? Um, we were we're down on all the listeds, and our solds compared to last year are very comparable. Um, you know, last year we sold, uh, we're down 29% compared to last year, but we were short 1,900 listings in April, right? So that tells you we're down on listings by 41%, but we were only down on solds 29%. So what does that tell you? We're still selling a lot of homes compared to the ratio of homes that are being listed. Yeah, more so than sense. even last year, which was still a you know very good year. Lots of yeah. demand last year. That's the yeah. one thing we got to remember when we're, especially when we're just looking at, you know, what these 2020 and 2019, 2019 was a great year for real yeah. estate. So we're outpacing that right now. Oh yeah. And like, look at January, right? We were up 208, 282 units sold, but we were down 768 units listed. You know, so, I mean, this has been going on for the whole, you know, since January. So you don't look at this as, oh, COVID hit in March. Well, it really didn't, right? Like people were catching it in November, but no one knew. Um, but the real pandemic started in February, right? But we already saw a, down, a downturn as far as um, how many things were being put on the market. So uh, some people had some fear early, I believe. Um, and also it's just that time of year, a lot of people are scared to list around the holidays, which is crazy because anybody trying to buy a house near Christmas is dead serious on trying to buy the house. So <laughs> if you put your house up for sale, someone wants to come see it, they're going to buy the house. Um, you know, but yeah, it's, it's just nuts, man. I don't understand how anyone can say that we're, we're going to have a, a downturn in pricing when there's not enough houses being sold. Yeah, we are. And what would cause prices to go down would be a, a huge influx of inventory, right? Right now, we need that inventory. Yeah, we need it to, to stabilize. You know, uh, as a homeowner, I love the value of my property going up. But, you know, at the same time, when it's increasing that fast, um, you know, what I'm scared of is like the house I'm in is not my dream home, right? I don't want to be here forever. I'm thinking two or three more years the home that I'm going to get next, I don't want it to be $5 million. You know what I mean? That when right now this year it may cost seven or 800,000, you know? So um, just thinking about it that way, trying to understand that, Hey, you know, this market is changing, you know, we're going to be the next Silicon Valley. That's what's happening. It is. You know? Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's just, it's scary. You know, you're going to get a three bedroom, two bed, two bath house. That's 1400 square feet for nine hundred thousand dollars in you know national city <laughs> yeah you know well it's, just, it's it crazy. is going to be built out from uh downtown you know the idea district and everything that's going on there they're actually targeting companies that are in silicon valley to bring them down and headquarter in the idea district in downtown which is a 13 phase huge project um and they're trying to basically sell them on that like hey san diego much better lifestyle than up there much better weather and much cheaper you know, to live here. So you don't need to pay these people so much money. It's very appealing. It pencils, it pencils really well for a lot of these companies. You saw Zuckerberg this week, what he said. He uh, said, oh yeah. He said, Facebook employees who leave Silicon Valley, who move and work remotely because they were giving them the option could be paid less. He was telling them that. Wow. So 
Silicon Valley, you know, I mean, Facebook is Silicon Valley, right? So they are um, telling people this, hey, you, you might get paid less if you move down here. Yeah, well, guess what? If you move down here, you don't need to make nearly as much as you do up there um, yeah. in order to have the same or even better lifestyle. So um, way better talk about and said that this week. That's crazy, man. I'm going to pay you less just because you live somewhere else. That's so, that's garbage. It was a stupid <laughs> thing for him to say, but I'm like, come on, bring it on. Keep talking trash. Let all those companies and employees come live in San Diego. Uh, but we need homes to sell them is the thing. Yeah. So that's really, we're begging for inventory right now. I mean, this isn't a situation where like, hold off. No, sellers, home sellers, please come to the table. It's a great time for you. You want to yeah. sell your home in this kind of situation. And we need it. We need we need people who are willing and ready to sell their homes. Need it. Trust me, we're out here with buyers right now trying to find these homes and it, they're unavailable, to say the least. So, all right, brother, let's hit the next slide. Okay. All right. So single family uh, residences, pendings, April, a 10 year comparison. Ooh. And then we have the attached, so condos. So look at that across the board. 572 down there for uh attached condos or townhomes and 1280 so that's almost a thousand short and 500 and change short so almost half right 50 percent ish is what we're looking at for pendings right wow. now compared to last year and then look at last year like you see how it see how, you know 2010 it was really high it dropped a little bit in 11 crept up 12 13 dipped in 14, crept back up 15, 16, dipped 17, 18, and then jumped back up 19 and then dropped. So, I mean, if you want to call it a crash, um, the market hasn't crashed. The availability has crashed. Yeah, you could say, maybe you could give some of the credit of this to COVID right here. Like maybe the, you know, the volume, the units, the number of sellers has, you know, been decreased a little bit because of it. And you, so maybe you could give it, but if you look at the rest of this, that's a very harmonic. I'd actually like to do the calculus on this and see what the harmonic analysis looks like. I mean, this is like a perfect, I don't have enough room on my mouse pad. Um, you know, <laughs> weave right here. Like, yeah. the, oh, I got it set to a thing that automatically does that. But, you know, it's like a, a perfect little yeah. ebb and flow, like very cyclical, normally, oh, inventory blows up, then people buy it. Then inventory comes up, and then people buy it. Um, so that, that looks actually very healthy and stable, extremely. Like that's a very, very encouraging graph right there. Yeah, it's 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 uh it's good, man. Like this right now, this is an unprecedented time. Um so if you have a home right now and you're thinking about moving or you think about moving out of state, now is the perfect time to use your leverage as a homeowner with a property to bring to market. Um, you have to think about it like a collector's item, right? People are trying to buy these things and they're unavailable. Um, so you just, you know, you have to really think about, you know, I was thinking about selling next year, but right now it was a great time. You're going to get more money from your house right now than you would ever in the past. It's insane right now. Great time um, for investors too, because yeah. if you, you know, people say, well, I thought you're never supposed to sell your real estate. True. I mean, you want to buy, if you can buy and keep it forever, that's great. But if you're an investor and you're looking to make leverage, sometimes when you know prices are are doing really well like this, it's okay to cash out, right? Sell oh, yeah. sell a property that's an investment, bring the cash to the house, and then go buy two more with that cash. Um, that's how you leverage. You turn one into two. So for investors or people who who want to get into the investing game, it might be a great opportunity for them to say, okay, well, let me sell my primary, where I can get tax free 100, 150 grand, and then I can go buy another primary with way less than that down, and then take the additional money and buy an investment with it. So yeah. there's ways to leverage this. If you are a homeowner, you know, that's one of the advantages of being a homeowner, right? You get opportunities like this. Oh, the market's hot. Well, let me get out the calculator and see <laughs> how much money I can put in my pocket. You know what I mean? So that's one of the benefits that we're talking about here. Yeah. Who couldn't use an extra six figures? I don't know. Cash tax free. You know? Yeah. Let's get it. All right. Let's hit the next one. All right. Let's compare to sole price. Okay, so uh, let's go 500, 600. We're at a 71% absorption ratio. That is nuts. At 600 to 700, a 67% absorption ratio. 
I mean, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, 2020. Um, huge. Yeah. So, I mean, you're just looking at the numbers right there. Um, sold versus listed. I mean, those price points and let's look at, uh, let's look at 400 and 500. I mean, look at the difference there, right? These are, these are, you know, basically if you're putting it on the market within, you know, that month, it's going to sell. Um, there's a high probability, you know, over 60% that you're going to sell it within that month, which means that house went on the market and closed on that same market within that month. That's less than 30 day turnaround. So you have a 66% chance at a minimum between 400,000 and 700,000 to get what you want for your home and get it sold in less than 30 days. I mean, it's insane. It's crazy. What we're starting to see too, is you see, you know, kind of gives you an idea on the volume here, you know, of kind of the difference in volume from one price point to the next, as we see, you know, just under 200 becoming almost non-existent. Right. Um, and then 200 to 300, really not much. I mean, there just isn't much there. You know, yep. so you're starting to see that the prices just sort of push, you know, higher in general um, with these stats as well. But the absorption rate at 71% is just nuts. Yeah. If you put your house on the market, it's listed between five and 600,000, it's going to go. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a sure thing, bro. Like, I, I don't know what else to tell anybody. Like if you're, <laughs> if, if you want to sell your house, it's going to sell. Like it doesn't matter the condition is in, it's going to sell. Someone's going to buy it. Yeah. Um, you know, I've got one client right now. And, uh, awesome dude, man. Great guy. But he's basically like remodeling everything in his house to sell it. I'm like, dude, stop. <laughs> stop. They're going to buy it. Trust me. You're okay. Don't do that. You don't need all that new stuff. Um, you know, but he, he, of course, wants the best bang for his butt. Um, you know, and it's a cute little house. Uh, but now he wants to buy a house right around the corner from himself. So I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I just if you if you're planning on making a move in the next few months, I don't know what next month is going to be like, but I don't see it really changing. Um, but well, it all, this month, all, right? Because this is April. We're looking at we're right, right, right. In but May. I mean, like, I'm and talking, like, we're seeing the same trend in May. Um, exactly. I, I just don't have the stat numbers because the month isn't over yet. But I'm saying like into June, like everything about selling your house in September. Um, I don't know what the interest rates are going to do then, but we kind of sure. have an idea of what they're doing right now. Um, and that keeps the buyers, you know, in a frenzy. They're still going crazy over houses because of the interest rates. Um, anything 5, 10, 400 or under is, is you know, awesome. Um, and if they have great credit, you know, still 3.25 ish, right? Like if they have the good enough credit score and all that. Um, oh yeah. 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 For VA, um, yeah. For, v, for VA, you can get under three if you, if you're in the sub five ten four hundred mark yeah. and really it's not, it's not bad. There's a bit of a lot of normalization with high balance too, where I've been, you know, seeing that opportunity as well with the good credit situations, Co you know, conventional loans, a little bit higher, right? You're going to be in the low threes to mid threes, most likely um, there, but yeah, those are still, traditionally speaking, extremely good interest right. rates for financing purposes. We, to give we legit money. have been spoiled the last 12 years. Um, well, 10, 10 years. Uh, you know, when my parents bought their house, I think it was like 17%. Adjustable. You know, <laughs> that, it was like the norm, 15 yeah. to 20%. Yeah. Okay, you know. But guess what? Houses were less than a hundred thousand dollars, and they're now worth that same house is now worth like seven eight hundred thousand dollars. So um, the equivalence of you know dropping that rate down is what's keeping it going. So yeah, I, I would definitely if you're considering making a move in the near future, um, you know, talk to us and let's see if these numbers that we're showing you match up with what your goal is and what your needs are, and see if we can help you get the most bang for the buck, get you a career interest rate, and help you move to the next spot. Um, let's hit the next slide. Cool. All right. So this is in 2019. Look at the difference there. See the rates, the percentages. I mean, not rates, but percentage yeah. rates. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. mean, so at 500 to 600, we were at what? 67%, six to 700. We were at like 70% or something like that. Um, big difference. So this is 2019. Yeah. Right? 
Yeah. So, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> I don't know. My nine was so bad it turned it into like a pan, a frying pan. Like <laughs> it's still doing it. It's like no, you get a magnifying glass. Um, <laughs> this is 2019's numbers. We just wanted you guys to know. Yeah. Oh, it says Very it at good. the top. It's right there. Right there. Right yeah. there. Right 2019. there. Yeah. Get rid of that pan, that frying pan. Not 201 in a frying pan. <laughs> <laughs> um, but as you can see, the the absorption rate is much higher this year, meaning testing your home. And last year was a great year to house. This year is an even better year. It's going to go. There's nothing more I can say about it. Yep. It's going to sell. Yep. No question. You know? All right, let's roll to the next one. All right, new listings. Look at that all the way to the right. Now, this goes back 10 years. And, and we talked about um, March, right? So if you look at March, you know, last month, See how we on a steady deep decline right there? Down. That was March. We were already down compared to, you know, last April. Look at last April and now. It's a huge difference. We were already on the decline. So everybody's saying that, oh, you know, it's not really to COVID or it's not really an effect of this or that. I mean, I would make the difference. We could argue about it. But I mean, I'm just going to let the numbers um, talk because that, that decrease in new listings it has a huge effect on our market and lets you know exactly what's going on. Um, you know, 10 years ago to the month, we were just under 3,700 listings. Now, look at us, we're under 2,000. I mean, you know, well over a thousand listings difference. Um, and that's just in the detached. That's not counting the attached, right? So we are we are all going down, down, down on listings. So that's the 2,000 mark right there. Yeah. And you can kind of see what happens is very, there's actually a, a pretty good trend here uh, that you can kind of notice, um, or at least there was, but now we're getting these lower lows, as you see, uh, we're sort of breaking the, the inventory bank, if you will. Right. Well, and then look at the last three months. I mean, see how wide those other ones are. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a normal cycle, right? Because what happens in, in January, December, nobody feels like selling their house. So there's a decrease and then it goes back up. We're hitting that another decrease in the spring. That's nuts. We should be hitting the decrease in November to January, right? That's our normal decrease mark for listings because people are traveling. They're going on vacations. They want to spend time with family. They're not really in the mood to put their home on the market because they don't want a ton of people coming with all their Christmas decorations everywhere. Um, but you're looking at this now. We're nine months ahead of schedule <laughs> yeah. for a dip. So and this is this is a big change. You know, it's a big change. So you can see this this little, you know, we got a little bitty one in a couple of these cycles. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, there's a little snap of, of inventory there. This one didn't happen, it went up here. Got yep. another little one here, a little teeny tiny one here. Got a big one last year. And this was kind yeah. of a little foreshadowing. And 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 what I saw with it last year, it you know, it wasn't COVID, it wasn't anything like that. It was honestly people waiting to su for summer. Um so I don't know if you remember this, but uh, the budget, the federal budget wasn't put out in time. Do you remember that? Yes. So yeah. military orders get postponed when there's no money. So because we are a military town, when people aren't moving because there's no money to transfer them, they kind of have to wait. And then all of a sudden, you know, so that decrease is what you're seeing there now when that budget finally got approved and everything got back, boom, it shot back up. Yep. You know, and you'll see that, you know, roll up to close to October because October is where the fight uh, funding usually goes to. And then it pauses while the new plan is waiting to get approved again. Um, so it's just, uh, it, it's, it's weird how it affects everything, but it does. It does. That's like our, our the, the military fiscal budget is, is every October, but when they fight about it in Congress and they postpone it month after month after month, it pushes everyone back. So when it does get approved, those that were in line first get moved first. And so that just takes a toll on, you know, our economy locally as well. Yeah. You can see here that, that we're, we're like, we're breaking the real estate market right now in such yes. a positive way. This, these cycles here, these little guys, are all pretty like similar. I mean, look how similar all these are as far as just where the dips are, where they go, where they top out at, you know, and then all of a sudden look at this. This is where we are now. 
Yep. So, <laughs> you know, this, you know, this thing we've been doing, these are year after year after year. So that's a yearly cycle, yearly cycle, yearly cycle. That's years and years of having a very similar cycle here where there's, you know, a few nuances in each one, but for the most part, it's very similar. And we've just completely broken it at this point. We, we're in desperate need of people who want to sell their home. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right, let's go to the next one. Active listings. <laughs> year after year. Different way to look at it. Well, scary, you know, man. That's the trend. Yeah. Yeah. So, so everyone out there, I need about a thousand houses to sell to help balance this out. All right. Help me help the rest of San Diego. <laughs> C A D R E zero two zero two seven nine five one J Lee Keller Williams San Diego Metro. Go ahead and you know slide on the the YouTube link um, or because uh, we'll have this on YouTube um, or comment in Facebook and let us help the rest of San Diego. If you're thinking about selling, let's go. Like you want to make some money? Right now is the time. This is crazy. It's insane. Bonkers. Yeah. All right. I said the next one. Pending listings. Okay, this is the cool one. Um, so pendings. Look at that it follows the souls, right? We have, like you said, a very similar market year after year after year after year. And then right now we're dropping three to six months early and both detached and attached. Yeah, the cycle's broken. We're breaking the market. We're like, like you hear about people breaking the internet. We are breaking the real estate market right now. Yeah, it's, it's I don't know how to, tell you it's going to be any different next month or, or what, but this is the trend that, that we've been seeing for the past couple months. And, you know, the, the charts, the data, the data is what shows it. This is I trying to sell you on something. This is me just providing data. And this is legit something that we've never seen before. Um, it is a shift in the market uh, going to a very, very strong seller's market. Now, after uh, the crash in 2008, um, it became a major buyer's market. Right. Well, this is going the completely opposite direction. It's going to a seller's market where buyers are the one that are struggling. And here's the difference. The people selling their home control the market. Right. Without homes listed, no one can buy them. So if, you know, there's nothing we can do to change that. Um, before it was like, OK, there was, you know, 6000 freaking house, houses listed um, and half of them are Rios. Right. Um, you can just take your pick and you can lowball someone and get the house for a hundred grand less than what they wanted it for. You're not doing that now. It's not happening. You're, right. you're going to, you're, if the house is listed, I'll tell you right now, I was, I looked at a house yesterday with a client and um, it was listed at 597. Beautiful home, four bed, one with a master downstairs um, as well as a great pool. I mean, fully updated. It was beautiful. 597. I called the agent you know, just to get a feel on what's going on. She's got four or five offers, 20 grand over list price, free rent back, no concessions. I mean, it was, it's insane. So I told my client, Hey, you got to go up at least 20 grand, to even compete. She's like, yeah, I'm not doing it. Right. And that's just something you have to be prepared for as a buyer in this market. You have got to be prepared to come in strong to get your foot in the ring, to even have a fight at winning the house because there's just so many offers right now. All right. Can you can you still win? Yes. Yes. All right. Sold listings. Same trend. Yep. It's going down. You know, I mean, it's just too early. Like, look at last year. April should be going up. Yeah, we should be seeing inventory right now, right? Yeah, we should be. Like I said, man, I need about a thousand listings between five and seven hundred thousand to help balance it out it's nuts um look at this look at this data that's what you want to see in it yeah i mean Median sales price but but look at us now look at the so if, if you we're kind of plateauing for right now but see how it it, it, it jumps around and I mean, we're up, up, up. We're at 680,000 median sales price on detached homes. So the median is different than the average. Okay. It takes the lowest price ever you know, sold right between this time frame and the most expensive price. 
And I don't even know what the most expensive one is. I know there's a listing right now in San Diego County for about a hundred million. Um, and I know Alicia Keys just bought that one for 20 million. Uh, Bill Gates just bought one. I don't even know how, like I think 40 something million. So 45 million. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, this puts it in the exact middle by number, right? So if there was, you know, 20,000 homes sold, 680 is the, the number in the middle. It's not the average. It's the number in the middle. Yep. Which is crazy. That's stupid. eye. just look at that trend. I think there's only two markets that uh, outpace us on that. It's Silicon Valley and I think New York. Yeah, it would have been it would have been hard, you know, to buy a home at any mark here, mm-hmm. and and like lose money on it. You know what I mean? Like you would have had to really sell it quick because any of these long term, if you give it, you know, a few years, any you know mark that's this long, which is how long down here, a year and a that's half. A that's yeah. a year and a half. <laughs> Let's make it at least two years. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like what two year mark, there's no plateau and there's no top that I can go to where I'm not positive. You know yeah. what I mean? Like even right here where it's like the closest. Go to, go to, um, go to April 18. Yeah. Right here. Boom. Look at that. Even there. If you bought an 18, you're making money. Imagine if you bought in 17. That's what I'm saying. 16, right? If you, 17. if you bought through five years ago, you have the possibility of bringing in a hundred thousand dollars of profit, hundred grand. And with today's interest rates being lower than they were then, your payment really isn't going to change much when you upgrade, especially when you have a chunk of money to put down. It's crazy. Yeah, those numbers are nuts. You know, so yeah. All right, let's go to the next one. I think next one's average. Boom. Look at that. So average sales price. Why is it going down? Do you might know? The average sales price. Mm-hmm. Why is the average sales price going down? Because there's more activity in the lower price points. There is, as well as there's less homes being sold. Yeah. Right. So when you look at an average, you're taking everything, adding it up and then dividing it right? By how many there was. Because we have such a less amount of homes being sold, our average is dropping. Still looks good to me. It does. I mean, you're, you're still going up. I mean, once the inventory comes back a little bit, it'll, it'll start going back up. Um, but right now, um, a lot of the inventory uh, above 700,000 is sitting longer than it used to. Um, therefore, changing this right now because during COVID a lot of people who are are not essential are the ones that were making the big dollars, right? Uh, Essential workers don't tend to make, you know, three, $400,000 a year. Um, That's, you know, the non-essentials, you know, the the stock brokers and stuff like that, the crazy, the crazy money guys. Um, Those ones are the ones that buy the very expensive houses, which really affect our average. And, you know, we're selling a lot more lower priced homes between five to 700 is a sweet spot right now. Um, and but we're still selling three to 400, 400, 500, excuse me, um, as well. So it's just, yeah, it's, uh, and there you go. There's your median. Crazy. So. Average uh, right now, you look at it, it says it's at eight. That's eight days. That's nuts. <laughs> uh, month supply. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, eight, eight days on market, man. Eight days, you know, monthly target. You know, that's median. I, I don't even know how to. It's just nuts. That's yeah. all you need to see. That's the lowest point on here i mean uh eight days of the market just yeah i don't think anything else really needs to be said about that yeah here's our month supply um right now we're at 1.9 months um for attached and 1.7 for detached that means whatever is coming on the market right now is gone in less than two months you know we don't have an inventory longer than that and 
you know, it's it's been pretty steady since January. Look at how tight this has gotten. Yeah. In the last 10 years. I mean, look at these inventory numbers over. Can you imagine if we had this many homes in the market right now? Dude, it'd be crazy. Man, we would you'd actually have, have some months. you'd actually you'd actually have some choices. <laughs> yeah, you have options. Yeah. Like right now, man, we go out, we like to look at homes. I'm like, hey, if you like it, you better play snocker. Because <laughs> if you if you don't, it's gone the next day. You look at it, you go, oh, let me think about it for over the weekend. Monday comes around, it's pending. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. You know, so hurts. All right. Average list price to average sold price. Again, just like last month, we're over 99%. So if you put it a house on the market and you've got it actually priced right, you, on average, your realtor is going to be at least 99% of that. Now, that means is some people have extremely overpriced and it's gone below. Other people are pricing below what it's worth and getting more. So our average is at 99%, which has been unheard of. It's usually about 94. That's, that's an, that's unbelievable because that encompasses the entire marketplace. Yeah. Which tells every, you every you know, price. Just know that, yeah, like good agents are always going to be above this average. Right. And like not as good agents are going to be below the average. So, this shows you that good agents are getting above list and you know, that there's obviously still going to be some people who aren't getting lists, but mm -hmm. that's something to, to keep in mind with this stat is that it does vary. This is an average, that's an average. Yeah. So, you know, there's, there's people who get an over list. Yeah. We, we, we have idiots out there that are pricing the homes very incorrectly. Um, and you know, they're not selling. So that's why we have some stuff still in the market. Gotcha. Cool. Let's go to the next one. Woo. All right. So this breaks you down. Let me move this. All right. So on the top left, we have 2020, right? Single family, top right. 2019, single family. So as you can see, new pending absorbed sold and pending absorption the pending absorption is the big number we're looking at on this chart because we've already talked about um homes that are listed homes that are sold and homes that are pending pending absorption means they are in escrow they have not been absorbed yet but they, they will be so if you think that we are that we had so we had in march uh, 63.54% pending absorption. In April, we had, what was it, 64%, I think it was, absorption. Yeah. So it actually went up. Like more houses sold before the end of, you know, that time frame. So it's it's crazy. Um, uh, yeah, attached. Um, we're a little less. Week in May here too. That's part of this, these stats. Yeah. So that should be noticed. There's, a, you know, the first week of May, um, you get some numbers there for people who might think that, oh, well, May is going to be the month that's going to really show, you know. Yeah, look, look over crashing. to the left in 2020, 87.52% of those oh, homes. Yeah, May 2nd to May 8th, those six days, 87% of the homes that went on the market are pending already. Sorry, I wasn't even looking at the right year. I was I was clapping about 60.5%. It's 87.5%. Yeah which is the biggest number on this, on this column. So it's bananas. So yeah, if you, if you were to put your market on the market in, in May this month, it's highly probable it's going to sell. <laughs> yeah, it's it's going to sell. <laughs> Can't guarantee anything, but Hey, all right. Do you want to look at these? Uh, we can. I mean, it just goes over the same data and different. So um, April 2020 closed sales decreased 31.1% for detached homes and 32.6% for attached homes, right? Um, one year change in median sales price for all properties is 4.3%. So take whatever you bought your house for, right? If you bought it last year and times it by 4.3% and then add it. That's how much equity you just gained. Um, one year change in homes for sale on, on all properties, 31.8% down compared to last year overall. So that means we are missing dang near a third of the properties for sale. This is your money right here though. And your equity, 
That's what this yep. column is. And then these are just talking about units, you know, yep. how many. And yeah, the units are down, prices are up. I think I think that's probably good, don't you, Jay? Yeah. I mean just that's like Yeah, it, it covers it cover everything else is pretty much like telling realtors to go do their job. <laughs> But yeah, we'll, man, we'll hold mean, that as a separate class. Yeah, that, that'll be separate. You you want Jay's coaching on how to go get, get uh, houses sold? Come call me. Um, <laughs> but 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 Derek, man, like I'm really curious what it's gonna say next month. Um, the the data that we're we're giving away for free right now. Um, we should start tar- charging tacos for this. Like if you're gonna come on our live, you owe us two tacos. <laughs> Well, here's what I think. I think we've got a situation where there's a ton of information that people are assuming, yep. you know, and then that's the problem. The problem is we make assumptions that, oh, well, it's pandemic. Then certainly this is happening. Certainly that's happening. Oh, people are losing their jobs. So certainly these things are being affected by it. Um, there's a lot of different things that are helping to buoy those circumstances that aren't so good. And, um, you know, real estate is, um, you know, some, something I've been predicting for the last few months is that real estate is going to be the place that's going to be the safe place. That's going to be the thing that people know about. By the way, we also have other things that are really helping demand, such as people are spending more time in their homes than they ever have. And nothing will make you realize you need to get a bigger home uh, or upgrade your house than spending a bunch of time in it. Right. Like, especially <laughs> yeah. you're renting a two bedroom apartment, you're working out of it. You're in there all the time. I mean, you're going, why, what are we doing? And you start rationalizing yourself with real facts. Like, wait a minute, why are we paying rent? What are we doing here? Let's get a place that we love. Um, Let's buy something. Let's stop throwing money away. So I think you have those things, those demand things, more people working from home. And a lot of people aren't going to go back to working from the office. You know, I'm probably one of them. I mean, it's dramatically more efficient to work from home if you have the right space to do it. So if that starts happening, people will start having the same thoughts I've been having, which is, wait a minute, this really isn't ideal. It'll work, but maybe I should look at getting something that has a better home office setup. So all those macro things that seem bad are actually things that push are pushing people uh, and pushing the housing market. And I don't even think we've seen the results of that demand increase yet. Um, so that's another thing. Like I said, man, Silicon Valley. Pile it on, man. Pile it on, brother. It's, it's going to get there and we will be the next Silicon Valley. Mark my words. Within- By the way, feel free to pass our names and information along. I uh, heard it from a couple of gentlemen today who saw us on YouTube. One of them, their, their dad saw it and, and told them to give us a call. Definitely pass our names along. If you want someone to get good information, if you want them to be taken care of like family, um, that's exactly what Jay and I do. So feel free to do that. I appreciate you guys thinking of us and uh, we'll be back again next month. We'll drop the numbers. We'll tell you where they're at right? Let them speak for themselves. Right now, they're pretty obvious. If they need some interpretation, we'll definitely jump in there and give it to you. Right now, the numbers are really telling the story. (laughs) Yeah. It's very obvious and very clear what's going on. Super strong real estate market. We hope to help you be a part of it. Definitely. All right, y'all. Take it easy. That's it for today. See you soon. We're out of here. Peace.